was my shepherd. I shall not be. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil.
real good friend to me. His earthly life has ended. But his eternal life has already begun. The family has so graciously provided an order Respectfully ask our adherence to that without any major deviations from it. Uh, beginning with the selection from Reverend Johnny Williams IV, followed by an invocation, Old and New Testament readings by Reverend Cornell Henry, a resolution.
come this morning bow his noble hearts. Lord God, we come thanking you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Realizing as we are here right now, truly, we're blessed. You know, God, we realize it is nothing so good we have done or so righteous that we have been.
for we know, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, this verse. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle will dissolve, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. For in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. And if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath brought us for this self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident. Knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, and whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that which he has done, whether it be good or bad. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, words of comfort for the whom I love.
this walk, in this life, on this journey that God will place us in situations where we must take up our cross and keep walking with him. That's where Sister Peggy, Sister Keisha, all of us are as it pertains to Brother Dow. Sister Peggy, God says he'll be a husband to the widow. If the father is not there, Miss Keisha, then the Lord will take you up. God is going to take care of you. But in the meantime, there's some disappointment, some sadness that all of us are experiencing. And I want to talk briefly from John 16 and verse 22, where Jesus says to his disciples, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and no man if your joy from you. I want to use as a subject today, I will see you again. You know it is, we sing this song in the church, this may be the last time. When it was made known to me that Brother Darrell was in the hospital, I, I went to see him. And I could tell that his cognitive abilities had declined and were declined. But I asked him, did he know who I was? And he said, he gave indication that he did. But I could tell it was difficult for him. So unlike he and I would usually do, I said, we're not going to talk. I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to be here. And in the midst of my sitting there, I could tell he felt some discomfort. And I asked him if he wanted me to call the nurse. And he again indicated, yes. So I stayed a little longer and left and came back the next day, but they told me that he was in dialysis. But little did I know that that would be the last time that I would see Brother Dow alive. Be it known unto all of you, it has me feeling some kind of way. And ye now therefore have some. Every one of us in here this day is feeling some kind of way. Sorrow is an emotion. It is an emotional thing. And all of our emotions have been affected because of Brother Daniel. 
And I would go so far as to say not as much as Miss Peggy and Miss Tasha. But nevertheless, we all are feeling something. What is happening, and this, this is what's known as the final discourse that Jesus is having with his disciples. And he is telling them about his pending death and resurrection. A little while and you will not see me, he tells them. And then a little while and you will see me again. Speaking of his death and his resurrection. Then he tells them, because I have said these things unto you, I'm going to die. Your heart is filled with sorrow. But nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. He's talking to us. What is he preparing them for? A separation. A loss. Hmm? A separation from his physical presence. He is about to lead through death. Someone who loved him. And as much as he tried to prepare them, they could still couldn't understand. As much as we try to prepare for a loved one's death, we are never fully prepared. And ye now therefore have some. He's talking to us. They would no longer have his physical presence. He would no longer be with them in the flesh. Brother Darrell is no longer with us in the flesh. Death has a way of invading our lives uninvited and interrupting the things and the people that we enjoy. And it leaves an emotional pain. And so often we don't like to deal with the emotional pain. How you doing? I'm all right. But there is a deep hurt. See, they loved Jesus. And he told them that he was going away and they couldn't under Standing is something about our sorrows. One, every one of us, Jesus is saying to us, in this life, we're going to have some sorrows. Ms. Peggy and Sister Casey can tell us about it. Even though we are Christians, not a one of us can escape. on my door. How many days do I have left? I don't know. How many days do you have left? You don't know. The only one that knows is God. He has numbered it.
And the thing about it, Brother Darrell's number has come up. I don't like it. It don't feel good. But I know it's coming. Your number is coming. My number is coming. And it is going to affect the love.
we got to hurt. Let me fast forward. To get to the everlasting joy, we got to go through the summer. We all got to deal with days like today. If we want to get to the everlasting joy, it's going to hurt sometimes. We're going to cry sometimes. But our God is going to turn it around. But you shall see me again. When we all get to hell, what a day of rejoicing it will be. Huh? You're going to see him again. You are going to see him again. And then, that thing we don't like to talk about down inside. Your heart shall rejoice. What's in the heart now? You describe your emotion. Hurt, pain, sadness, grief. You describe it. Confusion. Don't understand. Daddy, don't die. Daddy, don't leave. Yet and still, he left you, Keisha, and I feel for you. The Bible says, weep with those who weep. I feel for you, Miss Peggy. I'm praying for you, but Jesus is promising the both of you a day of rejoicing. It's coming. A day is coming where every one of us will say bye-bye to our sorrow. Every one of us is going to have a last day of sorrow. He says, when you see me again, your heart is going to rejoice. Why are we afraid? to deal with what's really in our hearts. Why do we have to pretend that we're okay when we're not? Hmm? The Bible says when Jesus got to Lazarus' grave, even he cried. Something so bothered or disturbed him on the inside that it expressed itself through tears on the outside. He felt it. Death will invade our life at certain times, interrupting all of our hopes, all, all of our dreams, and leaving us in this man. And Jesus said, once that joy comes, no man will take your joy from you. A day is coming when it will be beyond the reach of any man. It don't matter how they feel about you, they can't take your joy. Why is that? Because the joy that you are going to have. Come on and preach for me over there. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Sister Keisha, Miss Peggy, Miss Peggy, Sister what you need is a work of God in your heart. Amen. I can't do as much as I root for y'all and love y'all. Your family can't do 
as much as they love y'all and root for y'all. This is something that God and God alone can do. And he promises you one, that you'll see him again. Two, that you're going to see Jesus himself. And it is an absolute certainty. He's not a man that he should lie. He is promising you and all of us, you will see that love one. Again, this is not the end of this story. Death, which brings sorrow, is the gate to everlasting joy. That's the only way. And everything is working together for your good. And it's days like these that we just came for the life of us. See how this is working together for our good. How could something that hurts so much be for my good? In the midst of this discourse, Jesus used as an analogy a woman having a baby. Now, I just heard, I don't know because I ain't never had no baby. That it hurts. It hurts. It's painful. Those birth pains and, and that delivery. But after that lady sees that baby, there is so much joy and happiness. And that's what he wants you to hold on. Your joy is coming. Our joy is coming. As much as this hurts now, our joy is coming. Do yourselves a favor, which I have been wrestling with. So often when a person that we care about passes on, our last memory is of them in the hospital, of them going down in the grave, or them uh, initially taking ill, passing out, or something of that nature. Don't let the devil take you. I thank God, Keisha, Miss Peggy, for this picture. Y'all see that? I thank God. Y'all, y'all see that? Not only, and, and, and Mother Davis alluded to, Daryl had a generous spirit. Every summer, pastor, got some peas, you want some peas? Pastor, got some sweet potatoes. He would have a generous spirit. But I know y'all don't know. Brother Daryl would get sharp. <laughs> And don't let him put a hat on. <laughs> I would say, Bro Daryl, you're so sharp, you're going to cut somebody. That, I would call him preacher man. Man, you, you sharp like a preacher. That was him. Hold on to those memories. Huh? The good ones. Not him and his decline. When he was your help, when he was your guy, when he was your head, hold on to those memories, knowing that you will see him again. Amen. To 
Miss Peggy, Sister Keisha, this family, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, to strengthen you in the coming day. Thank you. 